Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to see a topic from uh, computer graphics, which is in module six, that is edge detection. So it is a very frequently asked question. There are three gradient operators which are used to find edge, which is Robert, Previtt, and Sobel operator. So we will see this. Okay. So uh, before going into that, uh, we will see what is an edge, what is the advantage of uh, finding edge, and uh, we will see the different methods. Okay. So in an image, first of all, by finding edge, we are getting a lot of features about the image, and it is used in uh, different areas like say medical and uh, even in satellite images. We are using this. So uh, to find the edge, we are having two methods. One is the gradient operator, and another one is using Laplacian. In the gradient, we are using the first derivative, and in Laplacian method, we are using the second derivative. So now the question is: You are having an image, and uh, what is this uh, gradient or first derivative and second derivatives doing in this edge detection? Okay. So uh, we will see an example. You can consider this as an image, which is an one D array. So here, the initial area is black, followed by white, and again by black. So I have given the values zero 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 seven 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 and zero zero zero. Okay. So here you can see this is an edge, and here also you are having an edge. So there is a transition from black to white, and again from white to black. So an edge can be defined as change in intensity value. A change in intensity value is called as a edge in an image. And what is the derivation, or what is the definition of a first derivative? In a continuous function, suppose if I am uh, marking these values as a function, here you can see these are zeros, followed by there is seven, and followed by there is a zero. So in a continuous function, when we apply a first derivative, it is actually calculating the change in function, a change in value. Suppose if we are considering with x, it will be checking. The change of x with its position. Okay, so the first derivative will be here. There is no change, so it will be zero. And once it finds, there will be peak, and again zero, and again it will be peak. So this will be the first derivative of a this function. Now, uh, in the case of discrete value, we will be finding the derivative by subtracting. So we will be finding the change in intensity value. So zero minus zero, that is zero. Zero minus zero, that is zero. In seven minus zero, we are having seven. Seven minus zero, seven minus seven. Zero minus seven, we are getting minus seven. Zero. Zero minus zero, that is zero. Zero minus zero, again zero. So here you can see, if we plot this graph, we are going to exactly get the same thing. And you can see here we are having zero values. And we are having a seven and a minus seven, and that is the exact position. Actually, we are getting the edges. So by getting the change in uh, intensity values, we are actually finding out the edges. And change in intensity is nothing but the first derivative. And that is how we are using derivative to find edges in an image. Okay, but uh, when we are dealing with two uh, D images, you will be having. My matrix representation, where there will be x value as well as y value. Okay, now how we are going to find the first derivative in x and y direction? So that is where we will be using partial derivation. Okay, so the gradient operator is denoted by del of i, which will be dou i by dou x, and you will be having dou i by dy. Okay, so this is called as g x. And this is called as g y. Okay, with respect to x, or there uh, in change with respect to x and change with respect to y. Okay. So uh, another thing is that uh, in the case of an image, we have to find out the when we finding an edge, we have to find the magnitude as well as the direction of edge. Okay. So that is also possible for finding the magnitude. The formula is root of g x square plus g y square and direction or angle is tan inverse of theta is equal to dou i by sorry, dou y by dou x that is or g y by g x okay so 
So continuing on, uh, we will first see the Previtt and Sobel filter. Here you can see uh, in both these cases we are using a 3 by 3 kernel or a 3 by 3 mask. So first we will see what is the uh, use of a mask or why we need a kernel. So in the case of a continuous function, you can use the first derivative. But in the case of images, we are using discrete values. So in the case of discrete values, by convolution, actually you can mimic the operation of derivative. Okay, so for that uh, convolution, you need a mask, and that is where Previtt and Sobel is using these kernels. Okay, so GX it is used to find the change in x, and this is in y direction, change in y direction. So, first of all, I will uh, uh, tell an example so that it will be much more clear. So, suppose if you are having an image area, so this is a part of image, and suppose we are having values say 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, again 50, 50, 50. Okay, so this is the original area, and suppose if you are superimposing this kernel, this Previtt kernel over here, okay, it is actually used to find the vertical edges. Okay, GX will be finding the vertical edges. So here you can see all are having the same value, which means there is no change of intensity and there shouldn't be any edge. Okay, suppose if you move uh, this filter over here, it will be placed over here, this value will be calculated. This value will be replaced with what we are getting the or the result of convolution. Okay, so here it will be 50 minus 50 that is 0, again plus 50 minus 50 that is 0, plus 50 minus 50 that is 0 and all these values will be 0 because we are multiplying with the factor 0. So, the result we will get will be 0. So, in the resultant, this value will be 0. Similarly, while we move along, so suppose if you are having again 50, 50, 50 over here, while we move along, all these values we will be getting 0, which means it will be an entire black screen, which means there is no edges. Okay. Now, okay. Now, think, uh, Suppose we were having values as 150, 150, 150, 50, 50, 50, 50 and 50, 50. Here you can see there is a edge okay, because there is a change in intensity value. Suppose if this is the scenario, what will happen? See, it will be 150 minus 50, again 150 minus 50 and again 150 minus 50. So here the values will be coming like say 100. Okay. So it will be like 100, 100, 100 and so on. So here also you will be having another value, it may not be 0. So in short what you are getting is that the edge will be or the vertical edge will be identified in the resultant image. Okay. So for GX and GY we will be calculating with absolute values because we are only interested in finding the edges, in which position we are finding the edge. And in the initial graph I have shown, uh, suppose if we are having a continuous function like this and you will be having a first derivative like this and this top point will give the magnitude. It will give the exact magnitude or strength of that edge. Okay. So uh, this will be exactly similar with Sobel as well. The only difference is that we are having a different weight. The center pixel is given a additional weight. Okay, that is the only difference and similarly using GY you will be getting the horizontal edges and using that magnitude value which is square root of GX square plus GY square you can find out the uh, image or edge image with magnitude. So in this case you will be having the horizontal edges as well as the vertical edges. Okay. So, uh, Sobel is the uh, widely used uh, edge detection algorithm and uh, it is having a much better version with a 5 by 5 kernel. Okay. And uh, in second order derivative or in Laplacian method, you are having other edge detection algorithm which is better than Sobel. Something like Canny edge, uh, is a, Canny edge detector is a much better version. And uh, when coming to Roberts, it is a 2 by 2, it is a 2 by 2 kernel which is used to find the diagonal edges and gx value will be 1 0 0 minus 1 and gy value will be 0 0 
1 minus 1. So it is taking the uh, difference of diagonal. Okay. So these kind of edges will be captured in gx and these edges will be or this diagonal will be captured in dy. Okay. So uh, suppose if we are having a 5 by 5 kernel the other edge angles can also be calculated in a much better way. Okay. Now uh, to generalize about the kernel size when you are having a smaller kernel size it will be having good localization okay what do you mean by uh, good localization suppose if you are having a 5 by 5 kernel so you will be having a 5 by 5 kernel so it will be having elements and we will be going to replace the center pixel and the value of this pixel will be controlled by pixels which are far away from that original pixel so it may affect the uh, original value or the edge detection that is why in this case the localization is poor okay whereas in this case we only if we are having a 3 by 3 kernel it will be having a good localization because the farther pixels will not be influencing the value of central pixel but here the problem will be it will be more uh, aggressive to the noises suppose if we are having a noise it will really affect see suppose if we are using a robot filter you can see there are only four values to compute the new position out of these four values if one pixel is having a noise value or if it is having a noise that is going to affect the result in a huge way okay so uh, if we are having a good localization or with a smaller kernel it, is, it will not be uh, resilient to noise whereas in the case of a last kernel it will be much more metal towards the noise okay so a uh, basic thing you have to know is the different uh, kernel values for gx and gy for sobel as well as private and for uh, robots and additional thing is for robot it is actually capturing the diagonals okay i hope it is clear for you thank you